Decision for Life. Welcome to First Baptist Church Indian Trail. But, uh, man, it's been a blessing already this morning to share in the first service. Good to be with you today. And I'm thankful to be back at First Baptist Church Indian Trail. Uh, it's been a few years. I remember, uh, I guess it's about 12, 12 and a half years ago, uh, Preacher Mike asked me to come and share in all three services. I think it was in March of 2007 uh, before we launched the South Campus, which is, was known as South Point Fellowship in Pageland, as I was the campus pastor there on staff here for five and a half years. And what a blessing uh, that time uh, was, and uh, many lives changed. And folks, uh, I think we baptized over 100 people in five years down in uh, Pageland and was extension of what God was doing here at First Baptist Indian Trail. Preacher Mike has a special place in my heart and my family's heart, and I'm so thankful for him and and Kathy, and uh, we're, we're glad to be at Indian Trail. Uh, my path was unique after I left uh, South Point. I went to First Baptist Church, Charlotte, and I was there with Pastor Mark Harris and was there for about four years as his associate. And then in March of 2016, uh, the Lord led me to become the president of Christian Adoption Services, which is located in Matthews. And I'll tell you all a little secret that nobody else knows about. Uh, is that we're moving our offices to Indian Trail in January. So we're excited. We're coming into Union County, baby, and we're excited to, uh, to be here. And so, uh, but it's been a blessing. Uh, and, and then after I came on board at CAS in March of 16, the Lord led us back home. Preacher says, come on back home. You know how preacher said. And uh, so we came back home. We joined as a member here at First Baptist Indian Trail. And uh, we attend the lift uh, each week with Pastor Lance. And I'm very thankful to be a part of all God is doing here at First Baptist Church Indian Trail. And I'm excited to be here on Orphan Sunday. Uh, it's, a, it's, been a, it's a privilege to come and to share and I speak all over North and South Carolina. But uh, I'm probably more, I was probably more nervous in prepping for this sermon. And I preached, probably, I preached, I preached about 100 churches in the last three and a half years uh, to come home and to be a part of what God is doing here on Orphan Sunday. So thank you in advance for allowing me to be here and I pray God's blessings upon us as we worship Him uh, this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 6 is our scripture today. Today's message is entitled, Adopted into the Kingdom. Adopted into the Kingdom. And while you're turning there, let me ask you a question. Uh, how many of you know someone that's been adopted? Just lift your hand right where you are. All right. I see hands all over the place. Man, that's awesome. I, again, as I preach in all kinds of different places, I'll ask that question and not a hand goes up. And I'm thankful for the adoption culture uh, that First Baptist Indian Trail has. And of course, to focus on a Sunday like today. And, and there are many agencies and different things happening. I encourage you after the service to go by First Street. And uh, we have a table there, CAS and other agencies and uh, adoption related ministries are there for you to come by, come by and visit. But that's incredible to see that many hands. So as we think about this scripture today, I really want us to think about, I preach this scripture a lot. I was a senior pastor for 10 years and I know I would preached this particular text, but I never thought of it the way that I think of it today uh, in light of being a part of Christian adoption services and being a part of adoption ministry every day. And so my prayer is today that you're going to leave changed and challenged because of a divine encounter with the Lord. And maybe you think about adoption in a whole different way as a result of this particular text today. So let's look at this text together. There are three truths I want to share with you as we talk about what does it mean to be adopted into God's kingdom. Let's look at this text, four verses, Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, holy and without blame before Him in love, have predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. Three truths if you're taking notes today, and they'll appear on the screen behind me. The first truth as it relates to this message, this theme of what it means to be adopted into the kingdom of God is this. Number one, we see in verse three that if you're a Christ follower today, you know you're going to heaven, that we are all spiritually blessed through a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
we are all spiritually blessed in relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, bless, the word bless or blessing, I think is sometimes we get that, we use that word sometimes a little loosely and we think about blessings. If I were to go around the room today and say, how many of you have been blessed and how have you been blessed? And especially during this theme of Thanksgiving, as we come up on the holiday of Thanksgiving, I can remember sitting around the table as a kid. My dad was a pastor and, and at Thanksgiving, I always get a little nervous. Right before, right before, food's out there, turkey's out there. And they say, my dad would say, all right, everybody's turn to say what you're thankful for. And as a kid, I was real nervous about that. I didn't know what to say, you know. And so this, this Thanksgiving fall season certainly helps us think about blessings and what we're thankful for uh, probably more often than other times of the year. But if we were to go around the room today and say how you were blessed, I'm sure we could fill the whole hour just thinking about the blessings that you and I are blessed by. We're, we're blessed people. Would you all agree? Amen? And so um, probably on that top five might be a blessing of a relationship with a spouse, a blessing of children, um, could be a blessing of good health, could be a blessing of a good job, right? I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. But what the Lord's trying to get across to us in this particular verse is that the biggest blessing that any of us could ever receive is a blessing of a relationship with Jesus Christ, period. That's the biggest blessing any of us could ever receive. And he doesn't want us to miss that. Now, let's look at this text again, because I remember way back in seminary, and I was in, I took a, a, a sermon prep class, and it was, I remember the details of that class, because I was a preacher's kid, but when I went to Gardner-Webb, I got a business degree, and then my senior year, the Lord called me into ministry. And so I go off to seminary pretty green when it comes to all those theolo theology classes and all the things I was taking. But I remember taking a preaching class. It was pretty nerve-wracking, by the way. I remember going to the chapel there at Southeastern, and we would have to practice preaching in front of our peers. And they were videoing you on the old VHS tapes, and then they were critiquing you, you know, good and bad. I mean, they were pretty harsh. They come at you, you know, pretty good. And so I learned a lot through that. And then I remember being in a class, the, the sermon, um, yeah, that was the delivery, and then the prep class of having to put together a whole sermon calendar for a year. Now, you think about that. And for me back then, I was a little bit of a procrastinator. I don't know how many of folks we have that like to do things last minute. That was me back 25, 24-year-old version of me, I guess. And I remember staying up all night putting that sermon calendar together. And it was pretty busy. So you had to do a Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You had to have sermon titles, sermon outlines, and, and the scripture to go along with that. And so about 4 o'clock in the morning after being up and having that class at 8 o'clock, and I was about halfway through on my, my calendar, I started scheduling Gideon speakers here, Super Bowl parties here. Man, I was scheduling as many as I could just to have guest speakers come in, having bands come in and all, all sorts of things. That was kind of neat, but I remember that. But I remember sitting in the class, and as I was learning what exegetical preaching was, letting the Bible speak for itself and putting together a sermon, and I remember my professor saying this, very clear, and it stuck with me all these years, was that if you see a word in the Bible, uh, in, a, in a verse or a couple of verses, and you see it repeated a couple of times, pay attention. Don't miss the moment, kind of a light bulb moment. Don't miss what God is trying to get across to you. So let's look at that text, verse 3, again in that light for a second, see if y'all see that word. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is what? Blessed us with every spiritual what? Blessing. Don't miss it. God wants us to understand the truth today. The biggest blessing that we can ever receive is a blessing of a relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't miss that. And, the, and listen, this world throws a lot of curveballs. How many of y'all have dealt with some things that are very difficult? Challenges, trials, right? We've all gone through some very difficult things. And we need to be grounded in the Word and grounded in, in, the, in, in our faith to be reminded through all the things that we go through, the difficult situ situations that we're in, we are, ble we are blessed people. And, and the reality of that today is, as I stand here as a 48-year-old man, is this. Number one, all of us are in one of three categories sitting here this morning. One, you are either just gone through a trial or a storm, a challenge. Two, you're in the middle of one right now. Or three, one is coming, right? Right? That's where we all are. So listen, these things are going to happen. We have to be grounded in our faith and be reminded of how, how blessed a people we are. I'll give you a quick story on that. Uh, uh, my dad and preacher Mike go way back and have been friends for a long time. My dad was a pastor at Apex Baptist Church outside of Raleigh for 27 years. And 
uh, just was a, my parents were just godly people, raised my sister and us very well and loving the Lord and, and, and those values in the Christian faith. And uh, our family went through a very difficult time a few years ago, about three years ago now. Uh, my mom, my parents had been married 45 years and my mom was diagnosed with a rare kidney cancer. And that hit us pretty, pretty tough. My mom was a godly woman, and uh, about eight months she battled cancer and passed away in January of 17. It was very difficult, age 67. And so we were going through all the first with my father, um, and my dad was still preaching at the time. And, and so uh, going through all the first of the first uh, Mother's Day, the first anniversary, the first birthday, all those firsts, right, which are very challenging. And my dad was grieving and and we were walking through that as a family together. And then about a few months later, in the summer of, of 2017, we noticed some memory issues with my father. He was 71 at the time. And noticed some memory issues and we're like, we need to take you to the doctor. Long story short, he had a rare brain lymphoma, all right, that was causing some issues. This was only about eight months after my mother had passed away. And I remember sitting in Duke Hospital and realizing that as the doctor was sharing, this was very serious, that if you don't treat this, then your father won't be here by Christmas. And to lose both my parents in the same year was very difficult. So my sister and I, we talked with my dad, and he said, let's fight it, and we did. I, I tell you today, dad is still here with us. He's living uh, with my sister up in the Raleigh area. Um, he comes down here to Charlotte uh, uh, about once a month and stays a week and loves coming in here. Some of you may see us walking. He loves coming up here uh, to the service and hear Preacher Mike, but... Um, it's been tough. I had to do something very difficult. I had to resign from my father from his church. He couldn't do it. He's, he still has memory issues. He can't drive. Um, but I say that not to warn any sympathy from everybody, but for this, I'm a blessed man. Because through all of that, right? Think about that. We all go through our stuff. We need to be grounded in the faith and be reminded through all the things that we go through, we're a blessed people because of relationship. With Jesus Christ. And we need to be reminded of that in this, this world that throws a lot of curveballs our way. So as we think about this theme of what it means to be adopted into the kingdom, if you're a Christ follower, we are, we are certainly spiritually blessed through that relationship with Christ. Secondly, we see in verse 4, through love, God made a choice to redeem us. Through love, God made a choice to redeem us. Look at verse 4. The Bible says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, in love. That amazing love that God has for us, that unconditional love that God shows us each and every day, that I love you no matter what. The truth is, as we understand scripture and understand who Jesus is and how God sent his one and only son to die on a cross for your sins and for my sins, is that there's nothing you could do to make God love you less. Now think about that statement for just a second. There's nothing that you could ever do to make God love you less. Now, that doesn't give us a license to go do what we want to do, right? There's consequences for bad choices, but there's nothing you could ever do to make God love you less. He loves us that much. He loves us so much. I believe if we were the only ones on the planet today, if, if, if everybody alive today was on the campus of First Baptist Church Indian Trail today, God would have still sent his son Jesus to die on a cross for you and me because he loves us. That much. Now, love is a word I think we mix up a little bit today. Um, I know in my slang, I might use it, uh, you know, not in the context of biblically, but I might say this, for example, I love a good ribeye steak. Has anybody ever said, you know, when it comes to food, throwing that around a little bit? Um, I know my kids, when they see the hot now sign at Krispy Kreme, I love Krispy Kreme, right? We all have our things that we love. And I think we use that word a little loosely, perhaps with our sports teams as well. I'm a Tar Heel fan. Hey, go Hills, right? All right. So I'm a target. I know there's some booze out there. We did beat those Blue Devils yesterday in football, and that was a good day. And basketball season is coming, I know. But I think a lot of times we get carried away with our sports teams. Would y'all agree? Get a little carried away? Last night when we were playing Duke, I was watching the game. I don't know how many of y'all saw it. But it was a couple of bad plays there in the last couple of minutes. Man, I threw my hat. And uh, Kim said, well, you, you know, my wife, was, we've been married 25 years. Those folks, are you, are you going to act like that tomorrow, you know, when you're preaching in front of everybody? I'm like, it's all good. I bleed blue. And you're right. You're right, Kim. Proper perspective, right? Sometimes we get a little out of balance when it comes to that. I think the Lord does have a sense of humor sometimes when it comes to this. Those of you who have gone through or have kids that are looking at college or just gone through college, I have two in college right now. One is a senior here at Metrolina Christian. 
And, and that experience is stressful, by the way. It's super stressful as a parent. Number one, the testing of the scores, you know, just the scores they have to take, uh, the tests they have to take to get into schools, the cost of college these days, the tours, and just trying to figure all that out. And, and so uh, the, my, my daughter, Emma, was the first one to go through this. She's a junior now in college, and so walking through that was stressful. It just was. And so what I say, Lord, has sense of humor. We visited a bunch of schools, and so, but Emma ended up going to this school that does this thing right here. It's called NC State Wolfpack. And so I'm writing checks to NC State, right, as a Tar Heel fan. And so God has a sense of humor when it comes to all this stuff. But we need to be, we need to be reminded of, of, of really the context of love. God teaches us here in this particular text that it was love that kept Jesus on that cross. He could have come off that cross anytime he wanted to. He's God, right? But I believe he was thinking about you and me as he hung on that cross because he loves us unconditionally that much. Praise the Lord for that unconditional love to choose to redeem all of us. Now the third truth is found in verses 5 through 6. Let's look at this together real quick as we think about this third and final truth. And this, this truth is probably the quintessential truth to kind of sum up this particular message as we think about what it means to be adopted into the kingdom. The third truth is this. If you're a Christ follower, you, we, have all, we have been adopted by Jesus into the kingdom. Now think about that. We've been adopted by Jesus into the kingdom. Check out this text. The Bible says in verse 5, Have predestined us to adoption. There's that word, adoption. As sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Now, as you think about that truth, let me, let me kind of break that down as we think about how that looks. First of all, God is our Father. We are his children. We don't deserve to go to heaven. Romans 6.23 is pretty clear about that. Y'all know that verse? I remember years ago when I was a kid having a Bible drill. I don't know if y'all remember Bible drill, but Bible drill, you had a Bible, and as a kid you would learn books, you would learn scripture, and you had to step out in 10 seconds to do all that. Well, that was ingrained in me as a kid. And so I remember Romans 6.23 very clearly, and it had a part A and it had a part B. Part A is not good, right? Part A is for the wages of sin is death. Now, if that's where it ended and there was no part B, we might as well shut it down because it doesn't matter, right? But praise God for part B because part B says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Let's look at it differently now. God is our Father. We are His children. We don't deserve to go to heaven, but because of what was accomplished on the, on the cross 2,000 years ago in the empty tomb, He brings us into right relationship with, uh, with Him and adopts us into His kingdom. Isn't that awesome to think about? God adopts us. He's our Father and He adopts us. We are orphans. He adopts us into His kingdom. So when you think about Remember I asked you the question a little bit earlier today and I said, how many of you know someone that's been adopted and hands went up a little bit around the, uh, around the sanctuary today? In light of the truth I just shared and the scripture that was just shared, let me ask it one more time. How many of you know someone that's been adopted? If you're a Christ follower, every hand in this room should go up, right? Because you and I have been adopted by God. Isn't that an awesome truth for us to walk away with today that maybe you never thought about that I've been adopted by God? What an amazing truth. Now, I love what the, how, when Jesus came and, and shared, and, and we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Gospels, and Jesus takes things to a whole nother level, right? Because in the Old Testament, we have the laws and how we're supposed to live. But Jesus takes things to a whole nother level. And matter of fact, in the book of, of James 1, in verse 27, he takes it to a whole nother level as far as us understanding not only that we've been adopted, but our role in this whole adoption deal. James 1.27 says this, Pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble. What does that mean to us today? What it means is, is that it's our duty. If you're a Christ follower today, number one, you've been adopted by God, but it is our, it is our duty today for care for those who cannot care for themselves. Now this is a big issue today, by the way. Throw some numbers at you. It's hard. Sometimes we don't grasp all these numbers, but there are 165 million orphans worldwide. Pause on that a second. 165 million orphans worldwide. I am convicted that the church is the answer. And if God's people don't stand up, who is going to stand up? 
to this number. And so as you, as you put these scriptures together, it is a call for all of us, every one of us in this room, to be involved in this issue. I don't believe everybody's called to adopt. I have three biological children. I'm 48 years old. Probably not going to adopt now, okay? But I believe God has called me and my wife and our family to be involved in this issue because of the 165 million orphans worldwide. I'm to be involved in this call to action and be, be a part of this movement. You may say, well, okay, I... And again, I believe there are people in this room right now that God's calling to adopt. And there are many ways to do that. And you've got to figure out, number one, God's call, that God's called you. And is this the right time to adopt? With CAS, Christian Adoption Services, we have three avenues for adoption. One is a baby from the hospital here in North Carolina or South Carolina. Two is our international adoptions, which is orphans sitting in these homes around the world that are, that are, that are homeless, basically. Not, they don't have a father or mother and they need a home. And then three, we have Foster to Adopt through the Baptist Children's Homes of North Carolina, which is a brand new partnership that we have right here for families that are interested in fostering and or fostering to adopt these children. So there, there are many avenues to pursue. We've got to figure out what is God calling us to do. But for those of us maybe like me that you know say, you know, I'm probably too old to adopt or God's not calling me to adopt, how do I get involved? Well, I can tell you first and foremost, number one, Prayer. The number one need is prayer. I get asked that question a lot. What's the number one need of Christian adoption services? Hands down, prayer. You need to be praying. The evil one hates what we stand for and hates what's going on within the ministry. And we need God's people praying for favor, for uh, protection in this ministry as well. So there's, there's, there's many ways to pray. The evil one hates what we're doing. And so uh, we need your prayers. Two is volunteer. There are many. We're right here in your backyard. We're going to be even closer in the backyard in January. And so volunteering and serving and helping us with our mission is so important. And then for those who can't adopt and maybe don't have the time to volunteer, you can give and help others adopt. And so there's so many ways to be involved in what God is doing through this ministry. Let me share a mission statement with you. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a cool mission statement. It's very clear and it's very focused. And it's this, to build God's kingdom by connecting vulnerable children with Christian families. To build God's kingdom by connecting vulnerable children with Christian families. We do that three ways. One, we believe that a child that's in a dark situation spiritually and physically can be placed in a stable two-parent Christian home. And it's a likelihood of that child coming to know Christ one day. No guarantees for anybody, right? But again, being exposed to the truth of the gospel at a young age hopefully will yield salvation in that child's life in the years to come. Just, just this week we had two babies born. One right here in Union County. In a very difficult situation, um, the mom chose a couple, a Christian couple with us, and that baby is now home with that Christian couple. I mean, that's just an example. Another one was born up in Greensboro this week. And so, again, the, the, the ministry to these children. Two is our families. As a nonprofit private agency, we only work with Christian families. And so we, we filter our families well to make sure that these families aren't just doing it because it's a good thing to do, but doing it because God's called them and they're going to raise the child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That's a high value to us. We don't want to place as many children as we can just anywhere we want them in a two-parent Christian home so they'll be exposed to truth and the gospel. And third is our work with our birth mothers, um, our pregnant moms that are in very difficult situations. Um, we, we deal with a lot of calls every day from moms all across uh, North and South Carolina who are pregnant and are scared and don't know what to do. And so the opportunity for us to be salt and light, to minister to them, even if they don't place their child, but to minister to them and show Jesus to them is so important to us. Last year, we had five moms give their life to Christ. This year, we've already had four moms give their life to Christ. So we're very serious about this, to love on these women. And so they, they see the difference that Jesus makes in our lives, in their lives as well. And so uh, we do an annual birth moms retreat that is something I don't know of any other agency that does. And it's something that we, very, we care for these moms. This is an all-expense paid trip for these moms. Well, they'll get together. It's kind of like a little vacation for them and where they get the opportunity to open, you know, get letters and pictures from the families and just to love on them during this incredible weekend. And so, again, just a blessing to, to, to serve these mothers. Um, I want to close today by just sharing. I, I like to share when I go and preach just a real-time story, something you can pray about. And I want to share this story with you. Just has a few pictures and a, a quick video to share with you just of uh, an amazing story of redemption. And how God is using CAS just to, 
to do some incredible things that are God-sized, some things we couldn't do on our own, for sure. A little over a year ago, um, we received a call on our hotline, and our worker Cheryl answered uh, the call, and it was a, a mom who was pregnant. She actually wasn't in North Carolina or South Carolina. She was in another state, but she had found our website and was real interested in placing her child. She was about four months pregnant at the time, and reached out to us and, and said, hey, I, I'm in a drug rehab center. I've made some very, very bad choices, and can you help me? And so that is totally not normal for us, especially not in North and South Carolina. And they're, not to get into the legal jargon today, but there's a lot of laws that we abide by to make sure we honor the Lord and ethically do things right. And so because she wasn't, we were licensed in North and South Carolina, there were things we could do and things we couldn't do because she was in California. And so our worker called me and said, Kevin, I really think we need to help her, whether this becomes an adoption or not. We need, to, we need to help this young lady. She's in a very difficult situation. Her parents are missionaries in Togo, Africa. She's been a drug addict on heroin, been homeless, and now finds herself in a drug rehab center and pregnant. And, and so what can we do? And so we began to research all that. We talked with our attorney who's a Christian here in Charlotte. He says, you can do this, you can't do that. And so part of the can't was... You can't spend, because she's not in North or South Carolina, you can't fly her here from CAS uh, money. You can't provide her a hotel and all that uh, from, with CAS for that time. But here's what you can do. If, you find, if she's wanting to move to North Carolina and relocate, you can find a local church that wants to partner and help pay for her to get here, a one-way ticket. And if, once she gets here, if a family will take her in and love on her and care for her, you can do that right, that will take care of her. And so we began to pray and said, Lord, if you want us to help her to get her here and she wants to come to North Carolina, then we want to do everything we can to minister to this young lady who's been through a lot. And so I remember sitting down with Pastor Lance at the lift and sharing with him this story. And he made it one quick phone call to Pastor Rick, a missions pastor. And within a, a day, they said, we are willing to fly her, First Baptist Indian Trail, to pay for a one-way ticket to get her here so that y'all can minister to her. And so that all went through. And so you can see a picture here of her, her, her flying in. This was our picture of meeting her at the airport. Her name is Whitney. Again, this was uh, last summer when she flew here. And so y'all know where I'm going with this. Y'all are an extension of this whole story and didn't even know it, right? I mean, this is, this is the god size story. So she flies here. Now, it's one thing to get her here, right, pay for a one-way ticket. It's another thing to say, hey, anybody want to, take her in. She's a drug addict. She's been through a lot and she's pregnant. And will you let her come live in your house for four months? Anybody want to sign up for that phone call? That's a tough one, right? Well, we had a family right here in Charlotte that had not adopted, but said, I, we will take her in. And so they brought her in. And so they took care of her during those months. And then during that time, she chose, she chose a family through CAS. And you can see some pictures here this is a local Starbucks as we move forward here. This is where she found out she was pregnant out in San Francisco. I won't be able to tell you the whole story here. I'll give you the five-second version. This is the adoptive dad, Darren, with little Maverick, the baby that was born. He happened to be in San Francisco working during the time, and this, this particular Starbucks was out his window or his office building in San Francisco, and this is the exact Starbucks where she went in and took a pregnancy test. And the Lord matched this family to them. It's, it's an amazing story. But go to the next couple of pictures. You can see here that this is in the hospital here in Matthews uh, when Whitney uh, had Maverick. And this was December 31st, New Year's Eve, 2018. You can see the next picture is another picture. Just amazing. And then you can see this final picture here of, of Maverick with Dana and Darren. That's the power of adoption. That's a story of adoption. And you guys were a part of that from the get-go of all this coming together. And I can't wait one day when little Maverick is growing up and one day he accepts Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And he's in heaven as a result of this whole story and how it played out. As we conclude today, I want to show you this one-minute video so you can see the testimony from Birth Mom Whitney. Turn your attention to the screen. God, um, I've seen God do so many things. Um, you know, he's... He's such a good God and uh, he pursued my heart when I was like not righteous. I was so a terrible person, like careless, selfish, no morals, so dirty and just 
and he pursued my heart and he made a way when I thought there was no way. I remember sitting there I'm like there's there's no way this is the end of it and um, it really was and it was just the beginning and he's made a way um, for new life, a redeemed life, restored. Um, he is the God of everything and you know he will take care of us for the rest of our lives. Um, the life in him like is just so satisfying like I've clearly tried so many other ways alcohol drugs sex everything God is the way and I know this and I want to tell people this you know because he is the only one that satisfies and um, and he's been in work um, with the adoption agency with Dana and Darren my life the Williamson's his hand has been in all of this just really um, orchestrating all of it and showing his love for us, his steadfast love, it won't ever go away. And it's just really, it's remarkable and I'm just so grateful to be a part of it. Wow, and amazing. Let me tell you about Whitney today. So that was taken about, we did that about a month ago. She's a student at Liberty University. She's attended Thomas Road Baptist Church. She went on a mission trip this year, sharing the gospel. And uh, she just got admitted to nursing program. She got accepted this week into the nursing program at Liberty University. Amen? That's amazing. That's amazing. You go back and piece that whole story together and how God worked in each individual's life. We are all an extension of that story and where it is today and where it's going. Isn't that amazing to be a part of? There's so many other needs out there and there's so many moms that we're ministering to and knowing that we're all a part of this thing together, hand in hand, and watching God work in families' lives, in children's lives, and in birth moms' lives. And so thank you for allowing me to be here today. We're going to move to a time of reflection and, and uh, I want to pray and then we're going to, we're going to sing a song here together. But I, I pray today that the Lord has touched your heart and you're going to leave here today realizing I've been adopted by God. And what is my role? What is my role? A part of this incredible ministry that's making a difference in so many lives today. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for today. I thank you for the privilege of worship. I thank you for your word in Ephesians 1 that we can leave here today and realize and understand that as a Christ follower, I've been adopted by you. So Lord, thank you for this incredible story of redemption in our lives of adoption. And Lord, we thank you for this, this incredible church, Lord, that's been a part of this story with Whitney and, and Dana and Darren and little Maverick. And Lord, all that's happened there. So Lord, help us to be obedient during this time of reflection. Lord, that, that we'll follow you in your call, and whatever that looks like. And uh, Lord, that we'll be obedient to you. And Lord, that we'll serve you faithfully. And Lord, thank you again for adopting us. We give you this time of reflection and we ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Thank you for watching Decision for Life. Our location, life group, and program information are available online at fpcit.org. We hope you will take the opportunity to join us in person. Thank you from the family of First Baptist Church Indian Trail.